909-693 AM. This is BBC Radio 5. and five, rising slowly. And that's the end of the shipping forecast. Radio 5. And now, with the new network set to launch at nine o'clock, let's look behind the scenes as they prepare to go on air. All right, Chet, what are you up to, then? What's the matter? Can't you see? I'm doing a tap dance with an invisible hologram of Frank Boff. Oh, okay then. Trev? What now? Well, you can't be. Why can't I? Frank Boff might be a perfectly good tap dancer. Yeah, but you're not. Stop bothering me, will you? Please, I'm, I'm, I'm perusing my opus. Ooh, I better draw the curtains then. We don't want to upset the neighbours. Don't be stupid. There's nothing rude. It's just that, well, you know, something rather special has fallen upon my worthy shoulders. Really? I never knew you had dandruff. I don't. It's just that I, Trevor Robert Neal, have been commissioned by the BBC, actually, yes, to write a ten-minute epic poem to celebrate the grand opening of Radio 5. Oh, that, yeah, they asked me to do that. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, Trevor, they've been around asking everyone. They were desperate. I think they even asked Frank Boff. You know, at one point, they were on the verge of upping the fee to one pound fifty. One pound fifty? Yeah. I knew I should have held out with that extra twenty-five pence. I mean, <laughs> well, not, not, it's not the money, is it? Um, it's, it's the glory, and uh, my words will be the first to grace the airwaves of BBC Radio 5. Oh, well, let's have a look, then. No, it's all right. That's, no, 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 leave no, it alone, no, please. Look, I'm not quite finished. Let and you wouldn't understand it anyway. It's not, it's not your sort of thing. Just... <sighs> right. Poo M to Radio 4 by Trob. No, you're right, Trev. I don't understand. Yes, OK, OK. Well, I had to do it on a BBC typewriter, uh, didn't I? Now, just give me it back, will you? You really don't realise, do you? You don't understand. I've sweated blood over this. I've been hammering away on this typewriter for the last... Oh, for the last two and a half minutes. Oh, all right, then. Well, go on, Trev. Read it to us. Let's hear it. Well, um... Oh, all right. Don't bother, then. No, it's OK. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yes, I will share my cuplets with you. Oh, should I go and get some mint sauce? What? For the cutlets. Oh, very funny. I said cutlets, not cutlets. Anyway, you know I'm a vegetarian. Yeah, well, they could have been nut cutlets. Yes, just shut up then, and I'll do it, okay? Okay. <coughs> Is that it? No, I'm just preparing myself, okay? Oh, hurry up. It's all right, I'll get there. <coughs> <coughs> An ode to Radio 5, devised by Trevor Robert Neal. Written by Trevor Robert Neal, and read by Trevor Robert Neal. Simon did absolutely nothing. Radio 5. Radio 5. A cheer will go up as you now come alive. On the very same day, my friend Clive learned to drive. We get Radio 5. Radio 5. What a hive of activity there is. <laughs> Not bad, is it, really? Well, yeah, carry on. No, that's it. No, Trev, that's not ten minutes. Well, well, no, give or take nine and a half minutes. I mean, uh, well, I know. I, well, I'll read it slower. Trev, no, it's not oh, enough. No, really? no, it's what? just not. It's not enough. Well, what am I going to do? I can't think of any more rhymes with five. I said hive. I've got drive. I've drive, got five. Drive, five. No, uh, look, you've you've got hive. to come up. Yeah, well, I don't know. You've just got to come up with something else. All well, right. I can't. I can't come up with anything else. I'm. I'm. Oh spent. no, you know what that Drains. means. Yeah, they're going to want their one twenty-five back. You know, oh, no. Oh, I'm, well, oh God, I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? How can I find someone completely stupid enough to fill in for nine and a half minutes live on the radio with millions of listeners? Trev, leave it to me. I'll sort it out. Yes. Well, not quite the perfect act for BBC Radio. With less than ten minutes to go before the Radio 5 launch, here is some more music. We now return to Trevor and Simon, who are in the Radio 5 studios for the all-important launch of the new network. 
So, Trev, it's not bad, is it? This brand new Radio 5 studio, it's pretty flashy, eh? Yes, it is, and I don't touch anything. You're not an engineer, are you? Well, I'm just waiting for the next guests. They should be here any moment. What? Yeah, I've got... Oh, I've, I've got two great singers coming in, Trev. Really? What? Mm. Like, uh, Luciano Pavarotti and Placido Domingo. Oh, no, no, much more popular than that. Oh, not Kylie and Jason. No, Trev, look. Oh, here they are now. Yeah, come on in, lads. Hello! Oh, no, I don't believe it. Not the singing corner. You brought in the singing corner? Well, they were cheap. You're telling me they're cheap. Completely cheap. Oh, but Trev, they're good on going live. They're useless. That's not saying much anyway, is it? They're useless. Oh, I don't know. I mean, the one with the guitar, he's not up too much, I agree. But the other one, he's great. What? It's the one with the guitar who's quite good, I'd, I'd say. It's the other one who just stands there shaking his trousers. Trev, it's swing your pants. I don't care what he swings. They're completely rubbish. Well, anyway, I've brought them in and they've written a song specially for Radio 5, okay? Oh, right, okay. All right, lads, take it away. Okay, then. No, 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 bring it back, bring oh, it sorry. back. Okay, and off you go. Bye. No, 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 so come stay back. in the studio <laughs> and start. along to a special radio edition of The, the Singing, Singing Corner. Corner. Oh, shall we sing the song we've written especially for Radio 5? <laughs> yes, okay then. Join in. Swing your pants. Radio, Radio, Radio 5 on the BBC. Radio, 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 Radio 5's the one for me. Oh, no, no, 5's the one for me. Oh, is it not Radio 1? No, no, it's Gary Davis. Ooh, Gary no, Davis. No, this is Radio 5 with ooh, Mark Curry. Oh, ooh, Mark Curry. Ray, Ray, Radio 5 on the BBC. Radio, 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 Radio 5's the one for me. Oh, no, 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 it's 5. Is it Radio 4? It's 5 but is the one... Four. Me. But four and one is five. Oh, yes, you're right. So maybe yes. it should be... Ray, 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 Radio 5 on the BBC. Radio, 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 Radio 4 is the one for me. Five. Five. Three. What, oh. what about Radio 2? Two? Oh, two. yes, well, maybe we could get them all in. Let's try. Okay, then. Ray, Ray, Radio 5 on the BBC. Radio, 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 Radio 5 is the one for me. Two, three, four, five. Is that any good? We wrote it specially. We made it up. All by ourselves. Well, it's not quite our own tune. <laughs> no, no. Who wrote it? Who? I don't know. No, nor do I. It must be a traditional well, can song. Can we sing Space now? Okay, then. It's good, this one, Trevor. I've heard it before. Well, I don't believe it. That's, that's, that's quite enough. Let's, 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 let's get them off, shall we? Oh, but I like space. I don't... It's completely spacey, if you ask me. Uh, Trevor, no, 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 I've, I've had enough. They were I, I don't care. I don't care anymore. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. Can I just borrow your guitar a minute? Trevor, you can play the guitar. No, it's okay. Can I just borrow it? Thank you very much. This is what I call real music. What are Trevor and Simon going to do with less than two minutes to go to the launch? We return now to the Radio 5 studios. <clears throat> testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me in there? Oh, hang on a minute, Trevor, hang on. Look, do you know you don't know how to operate a radio studio, do you? You don't. No, I do. It's it's, it's easy, honestly. I mean, uh, an idiot could work this. Yeah, that's quite appropriate, then, isn't it? Get on with it, then. Okay. What does this switch do here? And fifty seconds. No, oh, oh, sorry, Trav. No, it's... sorry. Um, Try another just... one. Okay. I'm... Oh. Um. Go on. Oh, oh. ow! <laughs> ow! Oh, stop it. Sorry, well, yeah. Trev, sorry. Get my head in. Okay, all right, right, I've got it. Okay, everything's ready now. Everything's perfect. So, uh, right. we're all ready, okay? Okay, right. Okay, let's do it. Right. Go on, play the fanfare. What? Play the fanfare, the fanfare. Oh, um, all right then. No, no. Not a funfair, a fanfare. Oh, fanfare, yes, a fanfare. Yes, oh, fan sorry. Okay, here you go. Right, you're on, Trev. Good luck. Break a leg. Shut up. Oh. <clears throat> uh, 
Ode to Radio 5, devised by Trevor Robert Neal, written by Trevor Robert Neal, and read by Trevor Robert Neal. Simon did absolutely nothing. Radio 5. <laughs> Welcome to the brand new network and the first special holiday program on Radio 5. Take 5. I'm Bruno Brooks. We've got some great music for you. Yes, I'm going to be with you for the next hour and a half at least with good music, as we've just said. Special guests include Paul Gazza Gascoigne, and there's a name you know. Mark Curry, of course, is with us today. Stories and quizzes with sounds like this. Got you thinking, hasn't it? Andy Crane will be trying out those white knuckle rides at Alton Towers Theme Park, one of my favourite places, and giving you a chance to win a weekend there as well, which can't be bad. Our prizes include a trip to our new Radio 5 studios, is where we're broadcasting from right at this moment. Very impressive studios, all brand new, and something to be seen. The pride of the BBC at the moment. So you'll need a pen to jot down our telephone number. Coming up after this, Penny. Five. Four. Thunderbirds are go. I always thought that was going to be a number one record, but never quite made it. That's uh, by FAB and MC Parker, of course. Well, our telephone number, I know you've got your pen ready now. It's 034 5 our star prize this week, of course, is a family weekend at Alton Towers Theme Park in Staffordshire. Andy Crane's about to try out some of the rides at Alton Towers now and could be in need of expert advice. Have you done the rides here? Yeah. Right, which ones do you recommend, sir? Um, well, if you want some kind of scary rides, I think the corkscrew, um, I think that's brilliant, the way you turn around, go upside down and everything. You get real scare out of it. And um, the Thousand and One uh, Nights, that's good as well because... Um, the way you go up and you fall down, you sh it's just brilliant, magic. Of the rides here in this area, which is your favourite? Corkscrew. Which is your favourite? Corkscrew. And which is your favourite? Corkscrew. I think I better start with the corkscrew then. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to do this. No, no, yes I do, I do. Corkscrew, it says. This ride is not recommended for pregnant women and people with heart complaints. While I am neither of the above, and children must be over 1 metre 20 centimetres to ride, I'll just go and measure myself. Yeah, that's just above the waist, so I think I'm okay. I better join the queue. Here we go, then. It's one of those elongated bicycle chain things that pulls you up to the top. This is probably the slowest bit of the ride, actually. Ah, oh, yes, that'll be one of the 360-degree loops, then, on my right. Still, there's no going back now. At the top. Turn a small right-hand bend, and then it's down to uh, Isaac Newton and the laws of gravity, really. Oh, this is quite slow, this bit. We're going quite slow, this bit. Oh, we're getting faster now. Oh, we're getting very fast now. First drop. Ah! <laughs> well, around to the right. Perfectly good to the floor. 90 degrees. First leg. Upside down. Upside down. And a big shot. Right-hand turn. Oh, slowing down. Chance to get your breath. Quick breather before we go down again to another dip. And then it's up, down, round to the right. Sharp right down bend. It's the way it kind of leans over and you're almost in the 90 degrees to the floor, perpendicular with the floor. It's really weird. Up, down. 
through the tunnel, around to the right. It really kicks around the corners, around, along, straight bit. Breather, relax, brakes, more brakes, slow right hand bend. Not a bad way to start my week at Alton Towers. Not a bad way at all. <laughs> well, we'll leave Andy at Alton Towers to cool off with an ice cream. He's got a good excuse anyway. And don't forget, there's a chance to win a trip to Alton Towers theme park. It's really a terrific place to go. Let's just say that you'll need a pen and paper, and maybe even your crayons as well. But more details on that a bit later on. This is Bruno on Radio 5, and Radio 5's first official programme called Take 5, and another quiz coming up later on, which is called Round the World in 80 Seconds. It's a hot air balloon quiz, and another chance to win a trip to the new Radio 5 studios here. And basically, we'll be going around the world in 80 seconds with a bit of luck, and seeing exactly how good you are with your geography. For instance, in which country would you see the Eiffel Tower? Yeah. Think about that one. Don't forget, we've got Gaza coming up later on. Also, DJ Matthew Wright, who could be the youngest DJ in Britain, of course, apart from myself. And after this music, Radio 5 presenter Mark Curry to tell us about his brand new Saturday show. Here's MC Tom Marsden with his Radio 5 rap. On your marks, get set, go. Have you heard of Radio 5? Well, it's coming out live. Programs coming your way. Every week of the holiday day. So listen up. One, two, one, two, three. A one, two, three, four. And take five. On Saturday mornings, on your marks, we'll get you going. It's got a club about the Olympics. Swimming, running, all the athletics. The club's going to be the centre of attraction. It will have loads of action. As soon as it opens, it will rock the nation. Join up everyone, you can have lots of fun. Don't worry, we're gonna keep rapping. We're gonna keep strength and tapping. Radio 5, it's sensational, recreational. Radio 5 is here to stay, stay, stay. time now. I've got a letter here from Matthew, Matthew Wrighton, uh, who writes, Dear Radio 5, my name is Matthew and I'm from rugby. I'm 12 years old. I'm very keen on being a radio presenter. My hobby is presenting a radio station called Radio W2. Uh, radio W2 lets other children in the station do radio presenting as well. And I've also enclosed a cassette of me chilling on the mic and greasing the wheels of steel. Anyway, I might as well ask if there's any suitable vacancies on Radio 5. It's worth a try. Thank you for letting me send my demo tape in to you. Best of luck with Radio 5 from Matthew Rice. Well, a very nice letter. But what about the actual demo tape? We've got a bit of that now. So watch your eardrums. Let the music begin. Yeah. <laughs> jokes for you. First yellowy joke is, the trashy joke is, what's stupid and yellow? Answer, thick custard. What's tall and smells nice? Yes, it's a giraffodil. <laughs> oh, these jokes really make you happy. I'm happy too. I'm glad to see you're happy. It's new, it's cool, my cup stick. It's 
just a part of uh, Matthew Wrighton's demo tape that he sent into Radio 5, and as you can hear, he's doing extremely well for himself already. He's managed to be with us today. He's come down the motorway on his bike. Hello, Matthew. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Uh, listen, how did you start, uh, and why did you become interested in presenting a radio show? I don't know. I suppose it was listening to you on the Top 40 every Sunday. Right? Really? Yeah. Of course, yeah. I, I think it was when I was about eight. Mm. Oh, it could have been. It might, it might have been someone else doing it, but... I, it was you, you or, or whoever did the Top 40 was the first DJ I heard, I think. So, how do you present this radio show? You don't actually broadcast on a radio station, no, do you? No, it's cassette radio. It's um, broadcast, not actually out to people, but broadcast onto a tape. And um, uh, just give the tapes out to people who want to listen. So, yeah. it actually came up with the idea. You came up with the idea. Yeah, I said to my friends, look, this is brilliant. And we had um, no equipment, so we just did it on this tape. And then I found Paul. <laughs> Paul's your producer, isn't he? Yeah. And you brought Paul down with you today. Yeah. How are you, Paul? All right, thanks. And you must be one of the youngest producers in Great Britain. How old are you? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, and he wants work experience on Radio <laughs> 5. Are you a bit like a good partnership like me and Liz? Yeah, we do yeah. our own radio show together. Like, yeah, but it, we don't argue as much as you and Liz like that. So you distribute these tapes to all your friends in the school? No, it's not in the school, though. It's to whoever wants to listen to them. Oh, right. Do you think the, the experience you gained in the World Cup will help you generally when you play football for Tottenham yes, and other teams? Yes, it will do um, very much so. Um, obviously, it's always an experience, whatever level you play um, in an England game, but the World Cup was even bigger experience. And, you know, at my age, I think I've learned a lot from the likes of the Holland team, the West German team, the Brazilians. Do you think you deserve the yellow cards you got in the West German game? And the first um, one. Well, I think if anybody gets booked, I don't think they, they think they deserve it, you know. But that game, you know, I knew I was on that risk line, you know, whether I got booked or not, I would miss the final. And they go so far in the game and then suddenly get booked, which I didn't, you know, the guy made a meal of it, rolling all over yeah. the place. And um, obviously whatever happened after that, you know, a little crying bit and all that, it was just, I think it was so emotional. I just felt like, you know, I wanted to pack my bags and go home. What do you do when you're playing football? Do you have any hobbies? Well, I've got pains in the back, so like you, Tommy, <laughs> doing this for me. You know, I've got to come here and talk to you. Like, no, I, I don't mind doing this. I'll, most of the time I've got, whenever I've got a bit of time, I go fishing. Tom and I do uh, a bit of fly fishing on the banks and get away. But then, then again, I'm still getting mobbed, so what I've done is I've bought a little boat and I go in the lake and there's no way they can get us there, can I? <laughs> yeah. Um, how did you come about getting the nickname of Gaza? Um, first of all, I think you start with Jack Charlton. He thought I was called Gary. You know, um, he was really bad with names, and he thought it was Gary. And then, um, you know, that didn't that didn't stay. And then one of the lads called us, started calling us Gas. My dad was called Gaza. Gaza was, with a, you know, double S. And my brother was, and we had a son in coach, and he presented it you know, like Gaza, the way his accent was. And Gaza just stuck. Are you going to release a record? Yeah, you've been thinking about it. Um, you know, it's just a, it's not for, you know, I want to be in a church, it's just going to be an experience, that's all. Um, I think I might be calling it the Gaza Rap or something. You're bringing a rap out as well, aren't you? So, you got any advice for me? If you weren't a footballer, what would you like to work at? Um, singer. Nah, I'm only kidding. I, um, I don't know, to be fair, I've never really thought of that from seven. You know, was even when I was at school, I never took any notice. I wasn't bothered. The only, th I mean, I, I've got three year levels, and that was at each school I went to for PE. Okay. <laughs> That's all. So, did you often get into trouble at school a lot? Um, no, the p teachers were very good to me. Um, you know, what I just said before was just a joke. I used to really try hard at school, but it was just one of them things I wasn't really good at. You know, I used to always try. But um, I always had football on my mind. You've played in the World Cup for England and achieved lots of things playing for teams, playing football. Have you got any other football ambitions? Well, you know, the general ambition of football is always to win the, an FA Cup medal. I think mean, the biggest thing in football is the World Cup. In four years' time, hopefully, I'm still in the England squad. And uh, I'll be wanting to win. You know, not just come get a bronze medal, but I really want to win uh, the World Cup. Do you get many fan letters a week? Um, I used to get a few, you know, before I went to the World Cup. But really, when I come back, I didn't realise how much family I had. And uh, I think I had about 60,000 family. Uh, my mum's now 
what I've done is I've had to start a fan club because the fans have been brilliant to me. So what I've done is I'm going to be starting a fan club, which I'm working on now, and it should be coming out in the last in the next month or so. So what I've done is I've you know employed my mum and my sister and a few other people to run it so it's spot on, and hopefully you know I can give the fans what they've given me. How do people get in touch with your fan club? Um, like you say, they used to um, you know they can. Uh, you send fans to Tottenham, the family just go to Tottenham, which sent us on to my family, you know, but uh, now with the start of the fan club and that, um, they would have to send, I've got the address as it happens, um, it's called the Gaza Fan Club, or Paul Gascon Fan Club, whatever, and it's P.O. Box 19, which is in Gateshead, and the code is NE81QF. So hopefully I may get a few more fans in that and send them a lot of information. Thanks very so much, Gaza. And um, would you like a piece of music to be played? Um, yeah, I would like the, um, the Jailhouse Rock by Elvis because um, I just I'm really a fan of Elvis. It really gets me going. We'll play that for you now. Thanks very much for coming along to our first program. Good luck in the new season.